Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. A quick warning before we begin. In today's first story we do talk about sexual assault and a pregnancy resulting from it. So if that is a topic that is uncomfortable for you, you might want to skip the story. Now let's get started. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user knockedup 27 I'm 27 female having troubles answering people's questions about my pregnancy. Caused some drama with friends. All 20s. I'm 7 months pregnant with a child I plan on giving to a wonderful couple, close to adoption. I made this choice because the child was the product of non-consensual sex. I didn't press charges because I was a bit of a party girl and didn't think I would be believed. I honestly have no idea who the guy was. I just remember trying to push him off and being too drunk to do so. Now, to get this out of the way, my choice not to press charges, my choice to keep the pregnancy, my choice to adopt out. I am comfortable with these choices. They are private and personal and I am keeping most of this to myself. My a-hole friends and co-workers have turned it into a game. I was hiding the pregnancy until I started really showing a couple of weeks ago. I get that people are curious about it, it's rather surprising. But I saw a betting pool being passed around the office. They are placing bets on who the father is. I was shocked and a little hurt. My friends are also curious. I have one close friend who basically knows everything. She's going to be in the room for the birth for me. And she's not telling anyone. So rumors are starting. One terrible rumor is that it's my now former friend Karen's husband Troy's baby. Karen called me in tears. I went over to her house to tell her to her face it wasn't possible. She demanded to know the truth. I told her it was none of her business and she blasted me on Facebook. Some friends have been really nice to my face but everything gets back to me eventually. Some people are saying that I'm a paid surrogate. I guess that one is okay. I hate that people are talking about me like this. I made one blanket statement on Facebook yesterday. Quote, I guess I can't hide it anymore. Yes, I am pregnant. I am giving a lovely couple the child they have tried to have for years. It's very personal and private and I ask that you all respect that. It's got a bunch of comments but I haven't read them. I'm going to take a big break from social media. I don't know what else to do or say. I am uncomfortable with everyone's constant questions. I love my job and usually my co-workers. It's my hope that I can suck it up and go back to normal in a few months. Weirdly, I've got a great inner peace with everything because I am so happy to be giving the adopting parents, who are the kindest men I have ever met, a kindergarten teacher and a social worker, something they could never have on their own. Here's what I need from the readers of this sub. What can I say that isn't a lie but will shut people up without giving out the information I'm not comfortable sharing? I don't like calling her, the baby is female, an accident. The two people who know the truth, my friend and my doctor, immediately asked me why I didn't report it. I'm ashamed and humiliated. I really don't want to say much of anything. I think a big part of why this is so hard for me and those around me is that I'm usually really talkative and social, loudmouthed. I'm in sales, so now that I'm showing, I'm also dealing with these questions from strangers too. Should I go to my manager about the pool, laugh it off, wait for it all to blow over? OP, first of all, I am really sorry that you had to go through that experience. I understand how difficult it must be for you and how difficult the decisions that you made must have been. But as you say, they are your choices and you've made them, you're comfortable with them. Now, regarding your questions, what can you say to people that will shut them up without giving information? I think actually that that surrogate thing plays really well here. Personally, I have no idea if being a surrogate carries any kind of negative stigma, but I would think it's better than somebody being an affair partner. And that, plus coupled with a closed adoption, just leaves everybody out. That's all the information they need to know. Now, regarding your friend Karen, I think she's got bigger issues in her marriage and is just looking for a way out. Now, you might be flirting with the idea of telling just Karen so that she's at ease and she knows that Troy wasn't the one. And my guess is that she's not gonna believe any of that. My guess is that Troy is a cheater, Karen knows it, and she's just trying to find some sort of mental excuse as to why it's not on her. Unfortunately, OP, 
I don't think it has anything to do with you, but it still sucks that Karen is doing this. And regarding your work, you need to go to HR. You don't need to tell them how you got pregnant. All they need to know is that some people are making this insensitive pool trying to guess who the father is. That is not okay in any kind of setting. And how do you guys think OP should handle this situation? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Coffee, vodka, Xanax. Is that a shopping list? Says, OP, I know this isn't directly about what you asked, but given what else you're dealing with, I just kind of wanted to put this out there. I also gave up a baby for adoption and I know from experience how difficult it can be in the days after coming home from the hospital with no baby. Even when you are sure about the decision and it was what you wanted, and I also know what it's like to not really have anyone to talk to about it. If you ever feel isolated and would like to talk to someone who has been through the same thing, feel free to PM me. And OP responds, thank you very much, I wrote down your username. My good friend doesn't work right now and has offered to stay with me. I've been saving and she doesn't know yet, but I'm treating us to a nice hotel for three nights with an in-room soaking tub and room service. I was thinking we'd both deserve a little pampering after this. Plus, it's an hour away, so we won't run into anyone. Deleted says, Your friends and colleagues are a-holes. Tell people simply that you are not sharing details. Keep it simple. Sounds like you do have one decent caring friend. After this was over, I would consider launching a fresh start. Given the circumstances of the pregnancy and how everybody is reacting, at least get some counseling to deal with this and maybe plot out some goals and desires for the kind of life you really want. Sorry you've had such a bad experience. And Opie responds, I am thinking about a new start actually. I love my field, building material sales, and I can do it anywhere. I don't have any family and my house would sell for double what I owe. I've been researching towns that I've always liked. My doctor gave me a referral for a therapist, but I wasn't interested. Maybe I should give it a go. Thanks. Yes, OP, give that a go. Illegal Brain says, I know it's a sensitive topic, but why not tell your friends it was from a sexual assault? That would shut them up very quickly. And honestly, they don't sound like good friends. My friends would never do that crap. Maybe the best option is to end some friendships. And Opie responds, I really don't want people knowing what happened to me. Like I said in my post, the first reaction was, why didn't you report it? I hate that I didn't. I hate that some dude is out there thinking he can do that. I hate that I used to drink so much. I hate that because I used to drink a lot and hook up a lot that people think so little of me. I just don't want everyone to know. I don't want this little girl to ever find that out. Additional information from OP's comments. I know it's unfair to put this crappy behavior on the whole state, but that being said, I don't fit in here anymore. I want a fresh start, but I don't think I'm up for city living quite yet. I've never lived in a town bigger than 100,000 people and grew up in one with around 400. I want somewhere with snow. I want to learn how to ski and sip cocoa by a real wood fireplace and no tornadoes. Anyway, my friend that knows offered to help me tell some key people what happened. At least to the people I really care about and to Karen. I should have told her. I just couldn't at the time. About the company I work at, well, we're a smallish outfit. We don't have an HR. We have an owner, manager, who I really respect and who is kind of like a second father to me. We are seven guys and me. I've always been one of the guys about this kind of stuff, but I should go to the owner and tell him what's up. I've been avoiding him. I've been avoiding everyone. I don't want to be pitied, but this crap is worse. I'm all over the place. I'm shut in my office with the worst heartburn I have ever felt trying not to cry. Alright, well, the community gave OP different perspectives and support, and apparently OP is ready to leave everything behind and just move away, but first she'd tell some key people and her boss. So now it's time to move on with the first of two updates to see what happens next, but of course before that, here's another one of my playlists for you to enjoy after this video. Now let's move on with that update. Thank you so much for all the support, I'm glad I posted this. So I had a good cry, took an antacid, or four, 
and went to the owner, Jim. I told them the truth and I told them that I really didn't want the guys to know and I needed the jokes and talk to stop because it was hurting me. He hugged me and told me he was proud of me, which made me cry again. Effing hormones. He gathered the staff and had a quick, what he calls come to Jesus, meeting. He announced that he would fire anyone who made me uncomfortable about my pregnancy on the spot and that all the money from the pool needed to end up on my desk pronto. He was great. He didn't share any of my personal information, he just protected me and made it quick and easy. After we dispersed, he told me I could have an additional week of paid medical. I already have two weeks of sick and vacation I haven't used. The 60 bucks from the pool turned on my desk with a post-it that says, sorry. I'm going to be a sport about it and use it to buy lunch for everyone tomorrow. I still have to work with these guys for another couple of months, 40 to 50 hours a week. Maybe longer, I'm still deciding. They just got their peepees smacked by work daddy for being insensitive in a place where we regularly tease each other for everything. They did something stupid, but I still want to get along with them. I still think, as great as Jim is, I need to get out of this town. I'll always be a trailer park floozy to people around here. My mama died when I was really young and I acted out a lot after that. Everyone knows what I did and won't let me forget despite working my ass off to graduate, working my way up to sales lead, buying my home and fixing it up myself. I'm sick of Oklahoma. I'm thinking maybe somewhere in Oregon or Washington, real pretty up there. I have a referral I'm going to look into. I've been aggressively remodeling my house, maybe in preparation to sell, and that's been very healing. I love taking something that looks old and broken and making it beautiful. Like everything has the potential to be great. People have that potential too, even dumb salesmen who did something dumb. On a positive note, this baby bump is sales gold. I just landed a big commission while sitting. Anyway, I am going to text and talk to my friend and tell her that she could subtly let people know what happened, especially Karen. Again, thank you for all the kind and helpful advice. I feel so much better. This has always been one of my favorite subs to lurk. Thanks. Alright, well OP has taken action, the boss shut it down and apparently she wants to tell her friends. So let's move on to the final update to see how everything goes. First, I'd like to thank the kind and understanding folk in this sub for your help when I posted a few months ago. I had a few PMs asking for updates and how everything went. It's been a wild ride. I'm posting this from a freezing, but spectacular, beachside hotel on the coast of Oregon. I had a job interview this morning that I feel really great about and two more lined up. My house sold fast and I have some money to live on and a fresh start. And do I ever need a fresh start? A few days after I made that post, rumors started up again. I was first pregnant with my boss's baby, and then it was a co-worker, and then my friend's husband again. To save face, I asked my friend to tell the right blabbermouth the truth. That backfired hard. Someone, or some people, I don't know, started posting on Craigslist about me and the baby. There's this section called rants and raves, but people post garbage there. I looked at some of the posts and someone really has it out for me. They said I was crying sexual abuse because I was a floozy who didn't know who the father was. They called me the worst names. I flagged what I could, but new posts kept popping up. I tried to ignore it. I had a good friend write me this long ass text about how I was making it all worse with my abuse story. I was devastated. I guess my prior life and reputation are everything people there will ever think of me. So I kept my head down and just tried to forget it all. It was affecting my work. I put my house up for sale and made a plan to get the F out. I used to love Facebook. I have cousins and such that I can only really contact through it. But I disabled my account during the Craigslist nonsense and I don't miss it. I got a new phone number too and only gave it to a few people I want to hear from. I was a little worried about having no social media presence and getting a new job, but I'll cross that bridge if it comes up. I have a glowing recommendation from my old job and a proven record of success. That should be enough. So, I was at 38 weeks and had resigned from my position. My wonderful boss told me I can come back, but I don't want to. I was selling most of my belongings and packing what mattered to me. 
Then there was a knock on my door, really late, later than folks should be knocking. It was a man I kind of know from the bar scene. He was drunk and angry. He told me it was maybe his baby and I had no right to call it abuse. I remember talking to him that night, but I really don't remember it being him. To be fair, I don't remember anything other than pushing him off and wishing I was stronger. I told him to go home and to leave me alone. I'm trying to be brief, but he made the next week hell for me. He was harassing me at my house every day and calling at all hours. He was threatening me and demanding a paternity test. I was terrified that he was going to mess up the adoption. I was growing more and more scared for my safety too. I couldn't sleep or eat. My friend came over and we called the police and told them everything. The officer who came to my house was great. I don't know what they said to him, but it worked and he left me alone. I went into labor the next week. I ended up getting a c-section because the baby had turned and was breech. One of her fathers ended up holding my hand. My friend was there but only one was allowed in the room. He got to cut the cord. The baby was perfectly healthy and beautiful. She has this thick dark hair and the chubbiest cheeks. Her fathers were instantly and madly in love. They took her home the next day. I had to stay a while because of the surgery. It was the hardest three days of my life. The hospital sent a therapist in and she was helpful. When I was released, I spent a few days in a luxury hotel with my dear friend. I never went home and I paid someone to pack my stuff for me. I spent the next two months at my grandmother's house in Texas, recovering and thinking and waiting for the cash from the sale of my house. I was terrified I would get a call that the man from the bar had somehow effed up the adoption, but it hadn't come and I grew less worried. I honestly don't care who the father is, I just want the baby to have a good life. I continued to see another therapist and when I felt well enough, I packed my rig and took off. There was a vague plan of heading west and finding it. I went to the Grand Canyon, I saw the Great White Sands, I spent an entire freezing day staring at the ocean in Santa Monica. I did the trip cheaply, mostly sleeping in my car and in cheap hotels. I spent time in every place where I found beauty and I landed here, at the prettiest place I've ever seen. I got a good rate at a motel and got an Oregon driver's license. I thought about changing my name too, but I don't want to change who I am, just the where. Wow, this ended up being a novel. Thanks again. Well, OP, considering everything that you went through and everything everybody else put you through, it sounds like you're at peace and happy where you are. So here's wishing you the best in the future, OP. Thank you so much for sharing and take care. Now, let's finish this video with a mood booster post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance and it's by user Superb Raccoon. Take my ID and tell me, ask me, what the F are you gonna do about it? Okay. So when I was a wee superb raccoon but still superb, I was in the navy. Recently 21, we decided to go to a bar that had a decent local cover band. So we show up and I present my ID. Grant you, clean cut and close shaved, I did not look 21. But my out of state ID was no good and all I had was my military ID. The doorman decides he can F with me. This is fake and I'm keeping it. My eyes bugged out. Dude, that is my military ID, give it back. Nope, mine now. 20 bucks or F off. I can't go back on base without it, I said. Then you better cough up 20 bucks or F off. Oh, I see. This is a shakedown. F off, huh? Okay, cue malicious compliance. Buddy who drove and used state ID drove us back. We went into the officer of the day's office to report my lost or stolen ID. Officer of the day is a crusty old bastard, but fair. Actually, a Mustang. He takes orders from the president and God. And we're not sure of the president. He might tell him to F off if it's a stupid idea. He listens. My buddy backs my story. His eyes narrow in an evil, evil way. Chief, can you come up here? I got a present for you. I started to shake a little. Am I headed for a few days in the brig for losing my ID? Frack, there goes any chance of a bump to E4. Seaman Raccoon here says the doorman at Joe's took his ID and wants $20. Pull a driver in one of those jarheads at the gate and go down there and sort it out. The chief looks at me like fresh meat. Come on you two, we're going for a ride. So we all pile in the van with a couple of marines in battle dress uniforms and sidearms. It is quiet on the way there. Chief doesn't look too happy. Can't believe I gotta deal with this crap. Well, at least I don't have to sit at the desk all night. 
So we roll up. The place is pretty packed. Doorman doesn't look so tough as the chief stalks up to him like a storm cloud spitting lightning and two armed marines flanking him. I am hanging back. Raccoon, this is the guy with your ID? Yes, chief. Chief gets up toe to toe with him. Chief is short and wide, but is built like a brick wall. The gym muscle doorman takes a step back, but the dude has nowhere to go in the tiny entranceway. Give me his ID now, or I will start looking for it myself. ID is produced. Hand it to me. Doorman ignored. Chief pulls the door open, looks at the room and motions for the marines to make a hole in the bar and make it wide. They do so, calmly shouting to move people out of the way as the music and talk die down. Chief grabs a chair, stands on it, then uses his parade ground voice. All active duty military, this site is now on the prohibited list. Pay your tab and get out. He gets down, walks out with marines tailing him, and half the bar follows them out. Very few are on active duty this far from base, but many are reserve or retired. They don't like crap like this either. The place went on the list and was still there when I transferred out six months or so later. Yep. I effed off hard and fast. Oh man, that bouncer is the definition of play stupid games and well, you know the rest. You just shouldn't mess with your customer base. Hopefully they learned that now. Thanks for sharing, OP. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.